Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good day, viewers. We welcome you to today's um, edition of the Daily Fountain, a daily devotional of the Church of Nigeria. The topic is longing for God, which is gotten from the Psalm 63, verse 1 to 11. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity you have given unto us to minister unto your children. Grant us grace, O Lord, and the viewers, the word itself, to bring transformation to the lives of every hearer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Viewers, I will be reading from Psalm 63. You, God, are my God. Honestly, I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. Verse 4 now. I will praise you as long as I live and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night, because you are my help. I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Those who want to kill me will be destroyed. They will go down to the depths of the earth. They will be given over to the sword and become food for jackals. The last verse. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by God will glory in him, while the mouths of liars will be silenced. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Once again, um, the topic is longing for God. To long for God means a prolonged, unfulfilled desire or need or having a nostalgia or a desire for help, for solution. David, in verse 1 and 2, honestly longed for God for security when his deadly enemies threatened him. His longing is described as hunger and thirst. This is parallel to what you have in Psalm 42, verse 1 and 2. For instance, we may hunger for our best food, or even thirst like a there pants for streams of water. I pray that our thirst, our longing, our desires, our honest desires will be answered by God on any situation and circumstances of our life in Jesus' name. May your soul pant for the true and living God in Jesus' name. David used some terms in his longing for God from where we read in the NIV. He said, Honestly seek him, task for him, long for him, look out for him, faint for him, as in a dry, thirsty land. Praise him with, with his lips, bless him all his life, lift up his hands in praises, be satisfied with God, give thanks unto God. The question we want to ask ourselves is, are all these your desires when you long for God? 
I think the answer should be positive yes. There are many issues bedeviling God's children in our days. We live in perilous times. And these uh, two issues borders on one, personal and family issues. And the other one is the societal and national issues. We'll begin with the personal and family issue. We have issues of insecurity within the family or personal set of marital issues, youth unemployment. Many of our children are graduates, finished from school, nothing to do. Some face health issues, health matters, financial quagmire or challenges, inability to settle rents and bills, children are out of school, etc. We have societal and national issues such as insecurity, mass poverty, kidnap for ransom as we see it happening all over the uh, country. Mass murder, when some people will just go, you know, especially in uh, communities that are called by the name of the Lord, and then they massacre them unprovoked. We have corruption in unbelievable proportion, proportion in the land. Dwindling economy, very high cost of living, which is beyond rich. Dwindling resources even into the church. High rate of criminality. This is just among others. Why will somebody not long for God? Why? In face of all these challenges we are facing. And that is what is going to lead us to what and who to long for. And, not, and what you should not long for. The only person we should seek for or long for is the only true God, the only living God. Because he's the one that has the capacity to do what no man can do. Our God is limitless. He's able to do all things. He said, he's the God of all flesh. Is there anything that is too hard for me? He told Mary, he told uh, Jeremiah and others accordingly. There is nothing impossible for our God. Therefore, we must long for the living God. Now, there are many other things people long for, and this is an error. Some people long for money, believing that money can answer every issue of life. If money can answer it, where are all these issues happening in the country? Some long for leaders or politicians, without which uh, their problems will not be solved. Some long for charms, carry charms all over the places. Some go to mountains and valleys and what have you, uh, water points, water basins, to say they are in one prayer or the other, and so on, as if that is where God is. Beloved, you can pray to God anywhere and God will answer you. Some believe in family names, and some cry to Mr. President. In every issue, they cry to him. Who they believe is able and is limitless, who can, that they believe he can do all. But they fail to realize, as we see in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 26 to 27, in the great famine in Samaria, a woman cried unto the king of Israel, Help my Lord, O king. The king replied that if the Lord do not help you, where can I help you? And that is the truth of the matter. There are issues beyond man. There are issues in the land. There are issues beyond us. And man cannot solve it. Nothing, your money cannot solve it. Rich people cannot solve it. That which we put our confidence upon fails us. The Bible says, Woe is it that put his trust in the son of a man. But I'm assuring you by this psalm that God is able to do all things. And when we long for this God, God will answer us. Man will fail, but God cannot fail. As a people that long for God, for God's intervention, cry unto him, for he will show mercy, and he will overrule every evil plans, policies, and situations that makes us 
to be discouraged or makes us to feel as if we have no help. The Bible says that I will lift up my eyes unto the hill from where cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Psalm 121. How do you seek or long for this God? The first thing is meditating on his word, as we have in Joshua 1, verse 8 to 9. This is also as David did when he was on his bed at night and at rest. And even in the quiet time, when you are alone, you can meditate and long for this God on any issue of life that bothers you. In Joshua 1, 8 to 9, when we are living in obedi obedience to God, we long for this God. God said that we are going, He's going to prosper us. He's going to prosper our ways. And He's going to grant us success in all issues of life. When you long for God in righteousness, honestly, heaven will be opened unto you. And I pray heaven will be opened unto you in Jesus' name. Secondly, we must seek for God day and night and be still before him. They that seek him will find him. If they seek him with all their hearts, we have that in Jeremiah 29 verse 13. You can also have parallels of that in Psalm 119 verse 10, Proverbs 8 verse 17. The third one is that you should develop a personal and deep relationship with God knowing fully well that we live in perilous times. Verse 8 of Psalm 63, where we read, is a pointer unto that. That was what David did. David developed a personal deep relationship with God. It reminds me of Moses in his time in Exodus chapter 33. God even testified that he spoke mouth to mouth, even with Moses. It, it, God did not do that with other prophets of God, but he did that with Moses because of the special deep relationship between Moses and God. And also, God, uh, Moses even went to the point of saying, God, may I see your glory? I want to know you. I want to see your glory. And God had to tell him that, yes, what you ask is a difficult one. Nobody sees God and live. But God did something special for him. The glory of God passed you know, God closed his eye. He could not see the face of God. Nobody sees him and live. But that is how deep the relationship between God and Moses was. I pray that in our longing, our relationship with God will be deep to the extent that on daily basis, always, we shall always want to be in the presence of God. And so shall it be with us in Jesus' name. Fourthly, we can hunger and thirst. For God's righteousness, both in prayer and by the word. Matthew 5 verse 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. The question I'm asking is that you that is longing for God, do you thirst for righteousness? Are you hungry for God? Do you thirst for, this, for the living God, and I expect a positive answer from you because you belong unto God. Fifthly, live an obedient life. Trust God with unflinching faith. We have that in verse 3 of Psalm 63 where we read, live obedient life, trust in God with unflinching faith. They that put their trust in him can never be put to shame. In fact, the Bible says they are like Mount Zion that can never be shaken. I pray as you long for God, your faith will be unshaken in Jesus' name. Sixthly, let thanksgiving and praise always be in your mouth. We have that in verse 5 and 7. Somebody who finds time to praise God, somebody who has time to give thanks unto God always, we definitely long for the living God. In verses 9 to 10 of the psalm where we read, the psalmist prayed for the demise of his enemies. 
this is purely what God can do if he chooses to do that on your behalf. But Jesus said, we should pray for our enemies. Not the kind of prayer some people make. Not my enemy fall and die. That is not scriptural. Matthew 5, verse 44 to 45, even says we should love and pray for our enemies. As a follow-up in Romans chapter 12, verse 9 to 12, 20, to 20, 19 to 21, believers are not to avenge themselves, but rather give place for the wrath of God. God said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Therefore, feed your enemy and give him water to drink. By so doing, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. You are to overcome evil with good. That is the principle of a child of God. And as Jesus taught us, please let us pray for our enemies so that who knows they may repent and come to God. If God is to answer such prayers, but adventure, we ourselves would have perished long time ago. But God is so massive, He's slow to anger. Let us follow the example of Jesus Christ, who prayed for his enemies even on the cross of Calvary. He prayed that God will not avenge that on their head. Stephen also prayed similarly. That kind of prayer in the book of Acts, where he was being killed. Beloved, let us follow the biblical example as we long for God. The summary of what we have been saying is that we should seek and long for God's presence. And especially when we are faced with threats, enemies attack, or when the enemy is on the move to destroy or to advance in any situation we, we face. This is the, uh, what the psalmist is saying, and that is what we should do. When you long for God, you will find him. He will attend to your needs in that situation. When you seek God with your whole heart, you will find him. We have that in Deuteronomy 4, verse 29, Isaiah 55, verse 6, 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 2. In other words, they that seek for God, they that long for God, we find him early. Let us do everything in righteousness, in obedience to God, to long for him, because heaven is our focus. And I pray as we long for God, we shall find him in Jesus' name. Thirdly, God's presence in his sanctuary generates joy and praises in those that long for him. In our quiet time, in the sanctuary of God, let us always give praises to him because God's presence is all we need. In our home, in our quiet time, let us always long for him and give him praises because God's power and glory is manifested on our behalf. Praises and prayer draws the presence of God close to us. When we praise God like uh, Jehoshaphat did, he praised God and the battle was won by them. He believed the prophets and then they were going in a battle against the Moabites, against Mount Seir, and the Bible recorded that they were going into there with praises, with joy, and God turned the battle against their enemies and they, they annihilated the enemies promptly. I pray our victory is certain when we are in the sanctuary of God and we long for God in Jesus' name. Thirdly, we must expect that you must reflect always on your personal situation, the situation of the church, where there's a lot of falling uh, backward, uh, where people are backsliding, people are trying to take to other means, and especially when some of the examples they see is not a pleasant one. So people are going back, and I pray that our longing for God, our, which is our prayers and our desire will be God, 
let there be a revival in the church. Let everybody who are backslidden turn back to the living God. So when we reflect on the society and the nation and seek the face of God desperately by longing for his intervention in all negative issues, this God will answer us. When we do that by faith, he's going to answer us, knowing fully well that we, that we are standing, when we stand on the steadfastness of God, and we stand right with God. This request is very, very urgent for the believers in our days, and for the church, and for Nigeria. Nobody is happy about the situation we find in the country. Nobody is happy about it. Are we God just going to be watching, you know, and be looking? We must long for God. God alone has the solution. No man has any solution. Man's wisdom will fail, but God can never fail us. In times like this, we must draw close to God. We must long for Him. We must develop personal relationship with Him. We must thirst and hunger for Him in every situation. Sixthly, the longing of the believer for God in verse 1 by David ended up in joyful expectation and praises to the name of God in verse 11. So shall our longing for God end up in joy and praises. As we long for this God, we shall rejoice in our lot. We shall rejoice in the nation. We shall rejoice for what God is doing in the church of God, in the society and in the family. That is what our longing for God, the result that we come out. It will bring praises to his holy name. It will give us joy and our ways will be right before this God. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, we shall long for the living God. Knowing fully well that all other things that people put their trust upon will fail. But God can never fail. Our prayer this day is that may our longing for God bring his presence to bear on us, the church and the society. May he judge the unrepentant enemies of the church and the nation. And let praises and joy saturate our being at the end of the day. And so shall it be in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you viewers for listening. I pray that the, the God himself whom you have listened to using us as his oracle will bring a transformation so that you will be longing for the living God every day of your life in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.